In the 1590s and 1600s, two of the key figures in the London theatre were the financier and manager Philip Henslow and the leading tragic actor Edward Alleyne. Remarkably, they left behind a unique written archive which offers a vivid picture of their world. What we know about theatre history, particularly of this period, survives in uh, manuscript libraries, like the British Library, the National Archives, and the papers are often scattered or, or not collected. We don't have a lot of information about Shakespeare's company because no one kept the papers. Henslow and Allen were shrewd enough to, and smart enough to keep their papers together, and they created, I think quite deliberately, the world's uh, most important single archive on theatre history. They record payments to playwrights, payments to tailors, to haberdashers, to people creating sets. We have exclusive contracts. We have the daily uh, box office receipts for particular periods. We have contracts that tell us what size the theater was supposed to be, how much it cost, how many days it took to complete it, how many sides it should have, what the sight line should be like. And all of these documents we have to piece together for Shakespeare's company or other companies from other sources. Philip Henslow was a businessman from Devon who was living in Southwark by 1577. We know that he was involved with the Dyers Company, working in clothing and haberdashery. Sometime in the 1580s, he seemed to have become very interested in theatre, possibly because we're not sure, uh, as a dyer, he may have been interacting with people in the uh, theatre profession in terms of providing costumes. So in 1585, he takes out a lease on some property in um, Southwark, which was uh, previously a rose garden, it's called the Little Rose, and in 1587 he arranges to have built there uh, a theatre which became known as the Rose. The Rose was the fourth purpose-built theatre in London and the first to be sited south of the river. It was the first theatre on Bankside, an area beyond the official jurisdiction of the City of London and notorious for its inns and brothels. It wasn't until 1989 that the foundations were rediscovered and excavated. This is the place that contemporaries of Shakespeare and Marlowe and Ben Jonson would have all had their performances performed here. From 1592 we know far more about the space because we have Henslow's accounts book, um, which is why we know all about Thomas Kidd's Spanish tragedy because it says it tells us the dates that it was performed here and how much money it took. And it was performed, what, 20 odd times here. You know, it was incredibly popular. Performed for James I as well as for Queen Elizabeth. So it had an incredible longevity. Um, most plays that, that well, there is, I, I can't find another play that they would perform for both monarchs. By the late 1580s, Henslow's Rose was home to the acting company known as the Admiral's Men, for which Henslow acted as manager and financier. Thomas Kidd's The Spanish Tragedy is among the plays known to have been acted numerous times by the Admiral's men. Early in the play, Horatio and Bell Imperia meet for an assignation, during which they are discovered by jealous rivals for her hand. And yet, my heart foretells me some mischance. Sweet, say not so, fair fortune is our friend. And heavens have shut up days to pleasure us, the stars thou seest hold back their twinkling shine, and Luna hides herself to pleasure us. Thou hast prevailed, and I'll conquer my misdoubt, and drown my, um, and, uh, and I'll conquer my misdoubt, and, ah. Oh. Why sit we not for pleasure, ask us these. Let's go and sit. Mm -hmm. He goes and sits down. Well, While he's saying this, I down. think you can move towards him, so that you, you'll be able to turn to say your couplet. Bit of floor by Horatio here, who jealous I will sit too near and then sit down. We have an archaeological site with the red lighting that shows the exterior wall of the theatre, the front of the galleries, and the all important L shape down there is with the front of the stage. So 600 people stood in the yard, the actors up on the stage, a tiny little stage which is a rectangle with triangles on a trapezoid. It's not a rectangle like the, the theatre stage at the Globe. Um, it's a slightly different shape. Very long, thin and narrow because the space here is very small. It's only 72 feet and 6 inches in diameter. 
So it's incredibly small theatre space. The reconstructed globe, the rose would fit just inside the yard and the stage space. So it fits in like a polo, it fits the, the, the hole in the polo. Um, so that's how much smaller this was. Among the other plays known to have been performed at the Rose are Christopher Marlowe's tragedies Dr Faustus, Tamburlaine and The Jew of Malta, each of which offered a major role for the star of the Admiral's Men, Edward Alleyne. Astrid Garlow, we are betrayed. My lord, away with her, take her aside. Ah! Oh, sir, forbear, your valet is already tried. Quickly dispatch, my masters. What, will thou murder me? Aye. Thus, ah! and thus, ah! these are the fruits of love. Oh, ah! In the Spanish tragedy, this great tragic actor is believed to have taken the role of Hieronimo, the father of Horatio, who discovers him murdered by his rivals for Bel Imperia's hand. Would outcries pluck me from my naked bed and chill my throbbing heart with trembling fear, which never danger yet could daunt before? Who calls Hieronimo? Speak! Here I am! I did not slumber, therefore it was no dream. No, no, it was some woman cried for help, and here within this garden did she cry, and in this garden must I rescue her. But stay. What murderous spectacle is this? A man hanged up and all his murderers gone and in my bower to lay the guilt on me. This place was made for pleasure, not for death. Those garments that he wears, I oft have seen. Alas, it is Horatio, my sweet son. Oh, oh, oh. As well as acting with the Admiral's men, Edward Allain became Philip Henslow's business partner and his son-in-law. When Allen marries Henslow's stepdaughter, Joan Woodward, in 1592, he seemed to have formed an exclusive partnership with Henslow. They uh, were involved not only in theatrical enterprises, but a number of other enterprises, including having to do with money. They were great property speculators. They bought property all over the UK, particularly in London, and they had a, a particular interest in Southwark because they were church, eventually both church wardens there, and they would make their deals with other church wardens and people in the community. By 1600, the Rose Theatre was facing competition from the newly opened Globe Theatre, where Shakespeare's company, the Lord Chamberlain's Men, was established. Moving north of the river, Philip Henslow and Edward Allain built the Fortune Theatre on Finsbury Fields, another area beyond the direct control of the City of London. Commissioned from the contractor for the Globe, Peter Street, the fortune was designed to have certain features done according to the manner and fashion of the said house called the Globe. But the contract also states that the fortune should be rectangular. What I've discovered in looking particularly at these documents is this is a very interconnected world. People are not rivals or competitors. They're drinking together, they're living together, they're gossiping together. So the idea that Shakespeare was a competitor to Henslow and Allen, I think, is not quite right. We have a sense that these people lived within the same small area in Southwark. They interacted very frequently. And they're, they may be slightly competitive in terms of whose play makes the most money or gets the most attention. But I don't think they marginalized themselves from each other or ostracized each other. This is a very interconnected world, and people are uh, actually quite friendly, quite, quite cooperative with each other, and often very supportive.